Glory to God. Hey, I want to I want to welcome you. This is week 10 to, of a study in 2 Corinthians. And I, I want to tell you how excited I am to, to see what God is doing in this ministry. This ministry is, I'm talking about, it's, it's touched every continent on this planet. And now here in the last couple of years, God has started opening doors and, in prisons and jails. And, and just in the last, you know, months, he has opened up. I'm talking about numerous places for us to minister and this podcast to go in. It's, it's approved in over 900 prisons and jails at the time of this recording. I don't know how many it, it, it's approved in when, when, when this, this podcast or this, yeah, this week, this podcast goes out. And it thrills me to see what, what God's doing. We're seeing people. I saw this just this last week. I saw a young man that he and I agreed, according to Matthew eighteen nineteen, that he was going to get a surgery that he needed to get him out of a wheelchair. And I saw him last week. I saw him standing tall out of that wheelchair strong. I, when I saw him in that wheelchair, he was just broken down and, the, and the, the, his legs were just tiny. Because of you know what what he was dealing with, and that was being stuck in that wheelchair. But the other day I saw him, and it was amazing what God had done. And I I, I thank God for His Word. I thank God for a, for a person like him that will agree with God's Word and see things change, but for, for, through faith in what God will do, not anything that I can do or anything He done other than just believe. What God's word says is true. And that we're seeing stuff like that all the time in this ministry. And I want to take this time right now to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for helping us do what God wants us to do, what he's commissioned us to do, what he's called us to do. And that is to teach people all over this planet who Jesus Christ has made them to be and, and watch them grow strong in their Christianity. Watch them go strong, grow strong in who God says they are. And if they're not born again, that, that is just that, that much more of, a, of an urge to see them born again. Because when they start seeing what God has really said about the, their, his born again children in this world, it makes people wanna, want to have what, what other people have. What we've got as Christians. You know, I've said this over and over in, in my lifetime, but God's word is true. And he, it says the goodness of God leads men to repent. And that is so true that we can we can look around and see God working in people's lives and, and the goodness that he has just shed abroad in, in people's lives and, and the, at what he does for people. And it makes other people look and say, I want that. I want that in my life. And, and it draws people to God. It draws them to him. And, and I thank God for, for the truth in God's word that we can stand on and see things like that happen. You know, just like that man in that wheelchair, that thrills me to be able to tell you that he's up and walking, walking strong, built back up his muscle. I mean, he was, he was looked like he'd been working out. His legs were built back up and everything. It's unreal what God will do for somebody that'll believe him. Thank God for his word. I thank God for him today. So listen, this study in 2 Corinthians, this is week 10. I'm telling you, go back to June 21st of 2021 and go through this entire study with us. In him, scriptures, Romans, 1 Corinthians, and now we're in 2 Corinthians. Glory to God. I count it a privilege to be, be able to bring you my prayers for this world we live in today. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know and understand the love of God, the love of God and how much he loved them. And I want this world to know that. I want the world to come to realize and understand just how much God cares, just how much he wants to be part of their life. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow 
in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he has given me that love, shown me that love every day of my life, and he does it through his word. Oh, I thank God for his word today. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I thank God that he has given us this scripture we're talking about today. This is a scripture that that if you'll get a hold of what God is, is speaking to us through Paul in this scripture I'm talking about it will it will put you on the right path to seeing just how important God's word of truth really is. And this we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 6 and 7 today. It says we faith, it says by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Now as you know, we use three different translations regularly on this on this uh podcast so that people can get a gist of what the the King James is saying a lot of people i think are in the dark about about a lot of scriptures because they they've never been given the opportunity to hear it in 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 today's language and the amplified classic is basically uh the King James translated and put into the uh, the Greek definitions for the New Testament and the Hebrew definitions of certain words for the Old Testament. It's a really good rendering of of what we we uh, set as a base in our Christian life, and that's the King James version. But by no means am I saying that King James is the only translation to read. No, you need to read a lot of different translations to get what God is saying through his word. Uh, the New Living Translation of 2 Corinthians 6 and 7 says, we faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in, in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. The Amplified Classic says, by speaking the word of truth. What is that word? God's truth. God's word in the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand to attack and for the left hand to defend. These weapons of righteousness comes from God's word. 
And I want you to, I want you to understand this today, that God's word, it, it is used offensively, offensively to, to, to get out here and walk through this world and, and overcome what the devil throws at us. God wants us to realize something. He didn't give us his word just to, just to get, to get out here and flounder around with and, 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 and not use it. God's word was meant to be used out here in this world so that he could get glory and honor for it and we could live a triumphant Christian life. See, a lot of people, my wife said this the other day. There, there's a lady we know, a precious lady. I've known her since I was a child. I mean, really, she knew me before I, I was even uh, old enough to know her when I was a baby. And uh, she, Missy, Missy told me, she said, he said, or she said, you know, she needs other translations so that she can understand what, what the Bible is talking about. Cause she says it all the time. I can't understand the word. I can't understand God's word. And she's took people's, uh, uh took their people's word for it her entire life and, and not really, uh, lived a victorious Christian life the way God wants for his people a lot because she don't understand the word. I'm not throwing off of her. I'm just, I'm just telling you. These translations are used to help people, to lift them up, to show them God's word of truth is here for you to not only uh, attack in the, in the world that we live in when it comes to this world, just, I'm talking about just bearing down on you and, and also to defend, you know, talk, talk the, the, uh, the Bible talks about standing against the wiles of the devil and, and being able to defend, to defend yourself against it, putting on the whole armor of God. Well, when we've got the whole armor of God on, and, you know, we don't have to worry about uh, the, the, what's going on around us, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of good Christian people that have good, very good intentions, good hearts, and want more than anything to to do what they're supposed to do in this world, but they don't have the whole armor of God on. Why? Because they, they hadn't realized that, that they can have that whole armor of God. I, I talked about this the other night at church, and, and this, it, it just stands to reason I, I need to say something about it today. But the Lord gave me something about, I talk about being grounded Grounded in Christ Jesus, in other words, attached, and I'm talking about in Him, walking in Him, and that's what this whole this whole study's been about for the last almost two years. But the Lord told me, He said, "Look up the definition of grounded in electrical terms," and I looked it up, and it was unreal what grounded really meant, and it, it's talking about the excess electricity and electrical system being able to be dispersed and be controlled when you when you hook the, hook the ground wire into a rod in the ground that excess electricity goes down and disp- disperses into the ground and and it makes it makes uh electricity not as dangerous so that you can operate with that electricity and 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 live in it. And, and I immediately seen what, what it was talking about, why God wanted me to see that, because God is all powerful. And, and in the Old Testament, people had to, I mean, I'm telling you, they had really had to watch what they were doing. Because, you know, one part it talks about if they step one foot on this mountain that God was on, that they'd die immediately. And another part where they're, they're moving the Ark of the Covenant, you know, this man just trying to help. He was trying to help. He reached up and steadied the Ark of the Covenant and immediately died. Died. Because that was the old covenant. Jesus, Jesus Christ came and fulfilled his part. He, got, he came and fulfilled the law that man could not fulfill in the Old Testament. He is... 
He is our, our, our link to God. He is God, but yet he lived as a man to do what man we couldn't do. And when he done that, died on the cross and, and was raised again and went into his father and, and lives now as seated at the right hand of the father, making intercession for us. And when we are in him, and I talked about, uh, he said, at these things I have told you that you might have peace in me. You know, he, he said, it, in, in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Well, how do you, how do you, how are you able to, to uh, harness, and I'm not really, that's probably not a really good word, not harness it, but be able to operate in God's word and operate in him. Because Jesus is that link. He's that grounding rod that all that excess power that, you know, uh, God put Moses in a, in a, in the cleft of the rock. He, all he could look was on his, on his, on his backside as he went by because there was so much power. Well, Christ links us to God. He said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. And when we get hold of being grounded in him, we can operate in, in all of God's power. How did Jesus say that these things that I do, you'll do greater? How are we going to ever do anything greater than what he does? It's operating in him. And, and it all starts from at past being born again, after being born again. It all starts when you find out who Christ has made you to be and, and for, where he has placed you when you get born again and, and the, the opportunity that you have to walk in that truth and to be able to come boldly to God's throne and be strong in him. Understand this today. God wants you to, to use every available, every available tool that he has for you. And one of those tools is, is being able to, to use what he has given each and every person on this planet, and that is his word, that is his spirit, be able to be guided and directed by his spirit. But you've got to understand that salvation, salvation brought you into a place that you can, I'm talking about, get linked in to God's power to be able to use the authority that you have been given through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and speak God's word of truth. And in speaking God's word of truth, it brings righteousness. It brings it by the armor of righteousness. On the right hand, to, be, to use that for the attack, for attack, and to be able to be on the offensive with, with, uh, with this world, and on the left hand, to be able to defend yourself against all the junk that comes up. So today I want you to understand something. Live in the truth of God's Word. Live in God's Word of truth. And you may be listening to this podcast and you say, I'd love to be able to, to live that way and, and to be that strong, but I've never made Jesus Christ Lord of my life. You may say, I've, I've asked God to forgive me over and over and I just come. Don't understand how why I, I feel the way I do. I'm going to say this. I, I, I don't want to cause anybody to doubt, but I'm going to say this. If, you, if you're in constant worry and fret over whether or not you're born again, do this today. Do this today. Romans 10 and 9 says, if, you, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, in other words, confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. And when you do that, settle that in your heart. By faith you do that. You accept Jesus as Lord of your life. By faith you accept that. Now take that and use it. Use it. You say, how am I going to use it? You're going to use the, the, the fact that Jesus Christ died to give you uh, authority in this world. When you speak something, you, it happens. 
when you spoke Jesus being Lord of your life, he gave you enough faith to believe that, that God raised him from the dead to justify us. I thank God for the ability that we have been given through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Make him Lord today. Quit worrying about whether or not you're born again. Do it. Finalize it today. Say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins, and I believe God raised you from the dead to justify me. I am saved today because I have confessed it in my mouth, and I have believed it in my heart. Do that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today, and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen, go to our website. Get in touch with us. There's all kinds of resources on here that are free to you. They're free to you, and I want you to have them. I want you to walk free of all the religion, all the junk, all the shame and the condemnation that religion brings, and you can do it. You can do it, and you can find everything that you need to do it with on this website. We've got this podcast. We've got apps that you can download this podcast. We, we, we point you uh, to the Word. That's all this, this ministry is all about, is teaching people the Word. Go to the website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, I want to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. I thank God for faithful partners that sow into this ministry, helping us do what we do, and that is to give the Word of God away all over this planet, teaching people who Jesus Christ has made them to be through their salvation. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do, sow into His kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.